Hello and welcome to Wednesday's Daily Reflection. I'm going to begin with a prayer which is taken from the Church of England Daily Prayer. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our saviour and mighty deliverer. Save us and help us, that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in glory, Make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Amen. Well, I promised uh, last time that I would take us through the little book of Philemon. You'll know that we've been looking at the book of Colossians in church. Paul and Timothy are writing from prison uh, in Rome to the church in Colossae and its two neighbouring churches. And it's a very public letter to the church. But it's accompanied uh, with a private letter, which is written to sort out a particular um, problem which is going on. Um, what's happened is that uh, a slave, Anisimus, one Anisimus has run away from a Philemon in Colossae. And uh, somehow he's pitched up in Rome and Paul has come across him. And he's heard the story and he's put two and two together. And uh, what he wants to do is reconcile Onesimus back to Philemon. Uh, Of course, uh, we don't know why he's run away, but we do perhaps sense in this uh, that he's stolen some stuff. And of course, as a slave, um, then he's at the mercy of his master. And so what we're seeing is uh, the book of Colossians played out when Paul says actually there's no difference between slave and free. Uh, This egalitarian community, uh, the new body of Christ, um, is going to be put to the test by this particular set of circumstances. And so Paul is calling in his friendship, he's laying it on the line. Uh, Last time we looked at the introduction, Um, it's from Paul and Timothy writing to their good friend Philemon and also um, his sister Aphia and uh, Archippus who works with them. It's a little church in a little house. Uh, These are all over uh, this part of Europe uh, and it just shows you how the gospel spreading. We finished last time uh, with Paul's commendation of Philemon. Friend you have no idea how good your love makes me feel. Doubly so when I see your hospitality to fellow believers it does his heart good looking and seeing what Philemon is doing and so often I'd have to say the same to of the folk that I care for so let's listen now to the rest of the book from verse 8 onwards and I'm reading today from the message just to give it a freshness in line with all of this I have a favour to ask of you as Christ's ambassador and now a prisoner for him I wouldn't hesitate to command this if I thought it necessary, but I'd rather make it a personal request. While here in jail, I fathered a child, so to speak, and here he is carrying this letter. Anisimus, he was useless to be before. Now he's useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you, but it feels like I'm cutting off my right right arm in doing so. I wanted in the worst way to keep him here as you'll stand in to help out while I'm in jail for the message. But I didn't want to do anything behind your back, make you do a good deed that you hadn't willingly agreed to. Maybe it's all for the best that you lost him for a while. You're getting him back now for good, and no mere slave this time, but a true Christian brother. That's what he is to me. He'll be even more than that to you. So... If you still consider me a comrade in arms, welcome him back as you would me. If he damaged anything or owes anything, chalk it up to my account. This is my personal signature, Paul, and I stand behind it. I don't need to remind you, do I, that you owe your very life to me. 
do me this big favour, friend. You'll be doing it for Christ. But it will also do my heart good. I know you well enough to know you will. You'll probably go far beyond what I've written. And by the way, get a room ready for me. Because of your prayers, I fully expect to be your guest again. Epaphras, my cellmate in the cause of Christ, says hello. Also my co-workers, Mark, Aristicus, Demas and Luke. All the best to you from the Master, Jesus Christ. Well, it's a a wonderful little book uh, which just shows how the, the church is working. Here are these master and slave and Paul's trying to begin to bring them back together into a new relationship because they're now brothers in Christ. Uh, how can one Esamus be Philemon slave when they're both brothers in Christ? Of course, they'll live together in this new community, which Paul is laying his own relationship on the line for and his own reputation on the line for. So I hope you're encouraged by this little story. It reminds us that we truly have uh, uh, a part in a church which is worldwide and runs through the generations, the body of Christ, with Christ himself, the head. I'll finish now with a short prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all the benefits you've won for us, for the pains and insults that you've borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Well, God bless and have a great day.